I'm in the home of Maddie Brooks. Is that on that line? It's on now. Can you tell me what your address is here? Let, let's leave this just right here. And I think it'll be okay. Oh. Yes, yes ma'am. I'm Maddie Brooks at Harker's Island. My address is... Okay. And um, could you tell me where you were born? I was born here at Harker's Island in the year 1916. Wow. And January 24th. January 24th is your birthday. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Wow. And my, my mama's name was Carrie, and my daddy's name was Eugene Kendall. Uh -huh. Yeomans. Were they from Harker's Island also? My dad, my mama came from uh, the banks over there. Wow. Shackleford Banks. Uh-huh. Yeah. And my daddy came from Wilmington. I see. I see. Did, um, and you were born, were you born in someone's house? Did, cause I know yes, ma'am, in, in their house. Mm -hmm. My daddy had a store. store? What did he sell? He sell, sold everything in the world. Groceries and had a restaurant in the back in the little, just a little hot dog stand. And sold appliances and everything. Isn't that something? Where on the island was that located? East of Billy Best's store. Uh -huh. On the curve. Yeah. The house was right by the store. Uh -huh. And nights we, children used to go sit out on the port the store was an old timey in a porch with a roof over it. Yeah. We used to I used to take a lantern and go we got down and sit little boys and girls and tell jokes and, and ghost stories. Well my daddy at the store he had to go to Beaufort and get the groceries at that time because we didn't never had a bridge. Mm -hmm. So he'd bring them in and had two or three boys work with him. And they had a horse named Jerry. Really? And they he'd they, the boy he'd come from Beaufort with the groceries put them in a skiff and bring them to the shore. The boys would take Jerry and hitch him up to the cart and go down to the landing and get the groceries and put them in the store. So Jerry had left, had been gone two, three days. Wow. And he fed to the, his uh, feeding stall was right to the western of the store. Uh-huh. So that night we were sitting there telling ghost stories and we, Jerry started coming up the road or the path, down the path. <laughs> trotting and scared us to death. Everybody jumped up and ran. I grabbed the lantern and caught it between my legs. Uh -huh. Tripped me down and there was shell in the road and that's where I, I stuck a shell in it. Oh my. There's a scar. I can see that scar on your knee. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you didn't know what was coming up the road, huh? No, and we didn't know what it was. Scared us to death. Just about how many brothers and sisters did you have? I had one brother and two sisters. Oh, I see. And your last name was Yeomans before That's, you were Yes, ma'am. I see. Yeah. There's a lot of Yeomans on the island, from what I know. Uh, yeah. But it's all just one from that one family. Really? Uh-huh. It came from Wilmington. Brothers and sisters, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did they have a name for your father's store that people called it? Oh, did they have a refer to it is no it's just Kendall store uh -huh. they called him Kendall Kendall was that his middle name uh -huh. that's neat there's no that's his yeah. grand his daddy Eugene Kendall mm -hmm. and Luther Yeomans was his brother he had a store up here on the curve the first curve up here yeah on your right that oh. store was his so they called it Luther store then Carl Lewis had a store in the middle of the island, that one that's, that the roof fell in during the hurricane. Oh, that big, huge place? Uh-huh. That was a store. Huh. And Mr. Hunter had one who was a little bit by, by the REA, close to the REA. Anyhow, we, that's where we had our recreation. We'd go to Mr. Hunter's and dance. Oh, my goodness. And I had a birthday one time. And Mr. Hunter sent me a card, and it was another birthday. Don't be sad. Good gracious, think of all I've had. <laughs> <laughs> I was just a teenager. Well, that's 
we didn't have a thing to do but walk up and down the road on Saturday night and sing. My girlfriend and I, Ruby, uh, she was a Willis. Oh. Yeah. We used to, we dress the finest, put our dress on our high heel shoes, a corsage on our shoulder, and walk up and down the road singing. Really? Yeah. Do you remember any of the songs you sang? Oh, yeah. One time we'd go to a, we went to a, this lady was from New York, Mr. Sanders. They came from New York, and they lived down by the post office. The post office was on the shore then. Mm -hmm. And That's what you're talking about, Mr. Sanders. Uh -huh. Oh, and we'd walk along the shore and go to Mr. Sanders' house. They had one of those old-timey Victrola with the Ryan Records. Yeah. yeah. yeah not the, the one that... Old timey kind that of was it like a cylinder? Yeah. Oh really? And and so we'd go there and learn the songs. We went there one day and learned the song. We'd go home, going along the shore. We could sing that song. Hadn't never heard it before. No kidding. She'd know the words and I'd know that, or I'd know the words and she knew the tune. That's right. Really? And we'd put it together. Oh. And one of them was, I don't care what you used to be. I know what you are today. <laughs> If you love me like I love you, who cares what the world may say? And when it was about, uh, your sweetheart is true and still waiting for you. We are willing now you should wait. If you only come back, you can marry your Jack and please your dear mother who said, if you should see your sister, do not reproach or blame. Anyway, anyway. And one night we were that Saturday night we were walking down the road, mm -hmm. and she we were singing. She'd sing tenor, I'd lead it, oh. and she'd say, we, "We said she said my sweetheart is dead," and he said, "Your sweetheart is true." She said, "Your sweetheart is dead," <laughs> and we got tickled to death by that. Oh, didn't gosh. take much to tickle us then. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. one, my there wasn't too many cars on the island. My daddy had one, and. Wow. Clem Gaskell, I believe he had one, and my Uncle Luther had one, just a few like that. Mm -hmm. So, anyhow, the garage, we had the garage down the hall, down the landing path from our house, mm -hmm. and this little boy lived on the shore, Lloyd Guthrie, he was my age, but he was a lot smaller, he was real short, his mm -hmm. legs were real short, mm -hmm. cute, pretty little boy. Mm -hmm. Anyhow. And, me, and they had never seen no colored people oh. on the island, oh. you know. Only the ones that went to town. We went to we'd go to Beaufort in the boat. Mm -hmm. By boat, well, the the, 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 the little, ch little children were growing up that hadn't never been, hadn't never seen no right. colored people. So, honey, me and my sister, we used to go to Newburn. My daddy used to. We, we'd take the boat and go to town to Beaufort and get on the train and go to Newburn wow. Christmas shopping. Wow. So me and my sister got a great big doll. Mm. She was four years older than me. She married Billy Best, his wife's mother. Okay. Anyhow, we we got ahead of that big doll and we smutted her. Put smut on her, you know. Made her black all over and set her outside the garage door. That little boy Lloyd would come up the path. Oh my goodness! So and we we hid, oh. and he came up the path when he saw that doll sitting there, that black doll. Uh -huh. He jumped up and screamed and turned around and headed back home. Oh flying. no! You scared him. <laughs> he scared him to death. Oh no! <laughs> we knew it would. <laughs> Did he find out? That oh yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. And on the island, when anybody died. Everybody quit their work. Mm. The fishermen didn't go fishing that day. If you were washing clothes, you quit. Mm. So my mother, we were washing clothes, and everybody in the family, all the girls, helped with the shores in. So, mm -hmm. so we, my mama was washing that day, mm -hmm. and I was helping. They, I was the youngest one. Oh. Wow. And we three girls was a helping. I do what I could, you know. They let me do a little bit to learn. That's right. Anyhow, 
we were they were and they boil the clues in a big iron pot full of water and light soap. Wow. God. Anyway, and we were there we were working washing with the washboard didn't have a washing machine then. So and Johnny Guthrie is one of the neighbors lived across the road from us. He come down was going to the land and he was a he used he went a melatonin. Mm -hmm. And he come by and he said that uh, Mary Willis had died. He said Aunt Marg's Mary, that's what we called her. Mm -hmm. Aunt Marg was a she delivered the babies on the island. Oh my. Those two, Aunt Fame we Fame and Aunt Marg. Mm -hmm. And Mary was Aunt Marg's daughter. Mm -hmm. And she was kinda retarded a little bit. So nobody didn't pay too much attention to her, but the, most of the crowd on the island loved her to death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She walk, she'd leave home and would come on down the island and talk to everybody she saw. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she was real sweet. I thought. Anyway, um, he came by down the path and he told us, said Aunt Margaret Mary just died. She was in Raleigh in Duke Hospital. That's right, Duke. Said she just died. He was going to the landing then to put his nets on the. Spread. They had net spreads. They'd spread their nets out when they weren't going fishing. Instead of going fishing, he was going to spread his nets. So my mother said, uh, "Young ones, <laughs> they they called them young ones in." Mm -hmm. So young ones said, uh, "Take the clothes that's already wet and hang them on the line, and the rest put them back in the hamper and put them in the closet." Because she she was dead, we couldn't wash that day. You just had to stop right where you were. Uh -huh. Nah, nobody don't know when anybody dies, hardly. Yeah. It's changed that much. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. Was, you were talking about Ralph Sanders. Um, I think someone mentioned his name to me that he did a lot of, started a band. Or did they oh, yeah, school, in the school. Stuff at the school. And we'd have kind of commencement, go to Beaufort and Moorhead in March. We won every time. Really? Yes, sir. Did you play in the band? No. Yeah. I, w yeah. I was... Did, did you, you would come and watch or listen to the yeah, band? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And I was in the boys played on the band in. That's right. Yeah, just the boys. And uh, we'd uh, have Maypole dance. To Beaufort, more hit the commencement. We win every time. Oh, no kidding. Uh huh. My daddy used to take us in the boat, his boat to Moorhead, mm -hmm. to the commencement. They would have a maple dance at uh -huh. the commencement. Yeah. Oh. And ours would be just right at the top, so we weave it. Would you do the the maple? Go in that. Uh huh. Oh, great. It was a it was a pole, and we dance. We had. Streamers, a ribbon tied from the top of the pole down. Yeah. So many girls, and we'd go in, interwine seats. Yeah. Plaited. How pretty. And ours was the best every time. Oh. Was it just girls that did that? Uh huh. Yeah. That's fun. Would you all practice? Uh huh. Wow. Yes, my gracious. But it wasn't just on May Day uh -uh. that you do it. You do yeah. it at commencement. That's right. Oh, that's so awesome. I guess they don't do that anymore. Mm -mm. They, no. no. Mm. Did they have oh, pe other people been telling me they had a lot of music at the school? They'd have uh, things where people would, uh, I don't know, drama things where people would be singing. Yeah, we'd sing uh, at uh, the gay 90s. Oh. We had the bicycle built for two. Oh. It was me and my cousin was on the bicycle built for two. Really? Evelyn, Evelyn. She was Evelyn Guthrie, then she married a uh, Gaskell. Mm -hmm. She lives in Beaufort. And uh, wow. we rode the bicycle. She was a man, I was a woman. <laughs> uh -huh. That's good. And we, were, we used to have a, they'd have commencement school. This is when my son was going to school. Mm -hmm. And then Evelyn Guthrie, her, the same one, Evelyn Gaskell. We used to be the interlocutors, we called it. I'd sit on one side of the stage and she'd sit on the other. And mm -hmm. 
we'd say, when I, I remember, I said, ladies and gentlemen, and you too, Charlie Russell. There was a man on the island that was real good. Everybody knew him, he was real nice. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody laughed. <laughs> oh, no. Was that, um... Uh, it was the gay 90s. Oh, gay 90s, yeah. Did they uh, ever have the uh, minstrel shows? Oh, yeah, that was a minstrel show. I'll tell you about it. Oh, really? I see that. Yeah, Charlie no. Russell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Charlie Russell. That's awesome. Uh -huh. Yeah. But he was sitting right on the front. Oh, and one time, uh, talking about singing, we, uh, me and two, three more girls, uh, Emily, the one who called me a while ago, and Ruby, my friend, mm -hmm. and Rosalie, she married my, there was one boy in our class, we mm -hmm. graduated, it was five of us, four girls and one boy, oh boy. and that was what, she married him, but anyway, we were going to school, and the, the school was going to have a, a high school, mm -hmm. going to have a contest in Beaufort, school, to Beaufort School, mm. singing, so we all had to wear our evening gowns, you know, we girls. So anyhow, that's a cart for the horse, let me tell you. We yeah. started practicing our song, a med we sang a medley. Oh, wow. Carolina Moon and... Oh. We'd sing Carolina Moon, oh gee, but I'm lonesome for you, Caroline. That was another song, lonesome for you. Oh. And then we'd go up on that and say, uh... Yeah, I turn this off. We, we, yeah. yeah. Carolina Moon. Carolyn, I'm pining, and then we'd say, oh, gee, but I'm lonesome for you, Caroline. We'd sing that, and then, uh, it's too sweet to be remembered. After we could sing that, we'd sing, that was an Italy. That sounds great. We knew our far away, oh, gee, but I'm lonesome for you, Caroline. It was pretty thing. Yeah. Anyway, Rosalie played the piano. I was going to ask if anyone played. Yeah, and yeah. She, could, she could play just as good as anybody ever did. In the world. What was her last name? Rosalie. Uh, Rosalie Lewis, but she's oh. a Davis now. She married Oliver Davis, that boy that went to school with me, oh. our, the boy in our class. I see. Anyhow, yeah. uh, we went to Leogan's and Earl Davis's. Mm -hmm. The bridge is named after him. You know, you've seen oh, his name on the bridge. Right. And he was the instigator of the. the Aria on the island, all that, the lights, everything. Mm -hmm. Good man. He's deceased mm -hmm. now, but we went to their house, Leon and Earl, and asked them to listen and see if they thought we could have a chance to win or, or we were all right to go. We, she sat down to the piano, we three stood up, and we all started singing. And they said, I, if you don't win, I don't see why not. It's because you're from Harker's Island. Mm -hmm. There's a reason they just don't don't want you to win. Oh. So we we went, mm -hmm. and we uh, that we went on the we had a ferry then. Oh. We went across on the ferry that evening. Yeah. That night we went in to the school building in Beaufort. Mm -hmm. And Oliver Davis, that's the one that she married. That's right. Later. And Maxwell Willis, he was a uh, in the area, the head of the area. So mm -hmm. they took us in their a uh, car. Oh, okay. And we stayed at uh, Wiley Taylor's, a lawyer's house that night. Wow. Anyway, anyhow, and there was a girl from the island, Julia Rose, mm -hmm. Julia Brooks. Her mama was a rose before she married. Mm -hmm. Letty Rose. But Julia Brooks, Letty was her sister. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, they were. She, she came to. She did. She married a heel. Okay. From Beaufort. Uh, in fact, he called me last week, that heel man. Really? He's 90 years old, 94, oh I believe. Oh, my goodness. He lives He's, in Beaufort? Yeah, his name was in the paper about, about the taxes going up, you know. Oh. Anyhow, and he called me. Mm. Anyway, Julia married him. It was uh, Charles Hill. His daddy had a store on Front Street. We used to go in the boat and stop by 
they really be used to go sit on the pull our shoes off sandals in the summertime and sit on the stern of the boat and drag our feet behind us in, in the water oh. till we got in the boat and then we put our sandals on uh -huh. and going in through his store uh -huh. on the dock his, and go through there on the streets yeah. to boat anyhow he did they, did they, come they were there that night to see us. Uh -huh. oh, cool. Anyway, we, we but we were getting ready about the evening games. We all had an evening games. We were going to graduate that year, and we had a, I had a yellow one with a organ, that, and it had a long cape on it, you know, with an organ oh, ruffle really? and that uh, yellow, like fur, but Malibu. What is it called? Hmm. You know, it's like a fur. Yeah. Around the edges, anyway. And Ruby had a green one, just like it. Mine was yelling her. Good. Her mama wouldn't let her wire that evening. Oh. Wouldn't let her go to wire that. Wouldn't let her have the evening gun take with us. Oh no! Everybody had one but her. So we said, "We all, we know what we'll do. We'll wire." They, there was a coat come out that year for the ladies. Oh. Long fish tail coat they called it. Really? They were plaid. Oh. So. Some girls on the island had brown ones, plaid, and some had different colors. So we, I believe I had a brown one and somebody else had two. Well, I, we didn't have to borrow many. Mm -hmm. They were all just alike, brown these tail jackets. I see. We put them on, every one of us wore one just alike. Oh, that sounds great. Because we couldn't have it, couldn't wear the evening gown. It looked bad with her. If she uh, didn't have it. That's right. That's right. So we got there and we were in the, in the, we had a little room on the sides in the dressing room. Mm -hmm. And the girls from Beaufort was our moorhead and all around with their evening gowns on, everything looked the prettiest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish I could think of their names, but I knew them, everyone. Mm -hmm. We knew everybody then because we had been to commencement and been to Beaufort enough. That's right. If mm -hmm. you could see them walking down the street, you knew everybody. Mm -hmm. But now we don't know nobody there hardly. Yeah. So changed. Anyhow. They went out, and they, I remember the girls from Moorhead walked out, on, and the man was standing on the on the middle of the stage, and he said, what are you girls going to do? Oh, and who is it? She, she said, uh, we're going to harmonize. He said, ask him what we're going to say. She said, we're going to harmonize. He said, okay, go ahead. Anyway, they started singing. The girl played the piano, and they started singing. The Can't think. Moorhead? Yeah, Moorhead and Beaufort. Someone was from Moorhead and some Beaufort. Uh -huh. They started singing. It was good. Uh -huh. And one of the girls said, We don't have to go out. They had their evening gowns when it looked the prettiest. Uh -huh. And I said, uh, One of the girls said, We don't have to go out there, young ones. If you don't want to, we don't have to. We were the old brown jackets on. Uh -huh. I said, Yes, we're going to do it while we're here. That's right. So we went out, they showed me ahead. Mm -hmm. I went ahead and the man oh. met me. He said, "What are you, you? where are you girls from? I said, Harker's Island. Mm -hmm. He said, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? He said, I said, we're going to try to sing. That mm -hmm. girl had said, we're going to harmonize. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I said, we're going to try to sing. He said, I'm sure you can do it. Go to it. Uh -huh. So we started. And we looked, we looked down in, in Oliver and Maxwell and Julia Hill. Mm -hmm. They were sitting on the front seat, were looking up at us, just smiling. Oh wow! And you know, we won first prize that night, and Did a little you? boy won. Uh, no, we won first prize in singing. Little boy, a little boy from somewhere around here, he won first prize for telling t stories or tales or something. Oh, that's cute. Different categories in it. Yeah. And I don't know how much money it was, but we went and bought us all a hot dog, and. I think that ticket that we didn't get much money. Mm -hmm. Well, you won first prize, so that's wonderful. Yeah, uh huh. In the singing category. Do you think Harker's Island, from what I could tell, there is a lot of good singing on the island? Do you think it yes, had I, a reputation? Yes, it did. Uh huh. Uh -huh. A lot of good singing. Yeah. Sounds like. Sounds like you did singing with. 
just through school and when you're with yeah. friends uh -huh. and all of that. And then what, tell me about the church thing. And now, what church did you, did you go to when you were first going? We went to the Methodist church, Northern Methodist. There's a Northern Methodist, Southern Methodist on the island. That's all there were. Oh, two wow. churches. Back then, really? Uh huh. Wow. And you went to the Northern Methodist. Yeah, and I used to sing in the choir, and Myrtle used to play the piano wow. to that Northern Methodist church. And I was in the Edwards League. We, we had the Edwards League and everything, and the, the young people did a lot for the church. And that 33 storm hurricane that came, we didn't know it. Oh. Didn't know it was coming. My Nobody goodness. didn't then. But the steeple blew off the church. So we got up a play really? and took it around to, to make man, make up money to put the staple back. Wow. We give it on, it was named Here Comes Charlie. Really? And Emily, that lady that called a while ago, mm -hmm. she was Charlie. Really? It seemed like a boy's name, don't it? Yeah. She, she was just as frisky, she was just like a boy. She was a tomboy anyway when she oh. was living like that. Now you wouldn't believe it, she's just as, she's, was, what was the play about? The Here Comes Charlie. Well, I was the I was the lady of the house, uh -huh. and um, Alec Twiggs. Uh, anyway, he came in and said, uh, "Somebody." That somebody said, some, I can't think of their name, but anyway, said that Cam said he died. He said when he died, to bring her here to you. I was an aunt. Mm -hmm. Their aunts said, uh, said, and said, said when he kicked the bucket, he wanted us to bring her to you. He came to the door and said that, and said, he, well, he kicked it. Came last week. And here she is. Here comes Charlie. She come in with her suitcase and everything, you know, uh, acting just like a boy, right, frisky. Oh, no kidding. And one boy come in and said, uh, it was Bertie Clyde Willis. He was, he said, you're not my aunt. I'm, he said, I'm not your aunt. <laughs> that he got it wrong. He was supposed to say, you're not my aunt. Oh. <laughs> and he got it wrong. He said, you're not my aunt, and I'm not your, he said, I'm not your aunt. He got that wrong. <laughs> and then, then he went over and said again, he said, nur, 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 you're not my aunt. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, goodness. Oh, we give it to the island, and then we went to Okeechobee with it. Wow. And the teacher, one of our teachers in school was in Goldie Hardesty. And, cool. and Mr. Hardesty was the principal. And he went with us. And of course, it's rough, rough seas down that way going. Mm, we had to go on a boat from this island, Harker's Island, to Okeechobee Island. Oh my and it was, and he got seasick. His hair was real black. And he, he, I looked at him one time, and the curl was hanging on his forehead. Mm. He was right white in the face, the black hair. Mm. And he said, "I've been teaching school on the island for so many years. It's a lot." He was here. Mm. He said. And I've been through more today than I ever have before. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, we, we went on Betty Al's boat, my uncle's boat. And it, the boat was loaded and carried the most food to eat. Mm, I bet. It all the way going. Oh, my goodness. They were throwing bread all over everywhere. <laughs> and we went and we went to Okakook to the dock. That was an experience I'll never forget. I enjoyed that the most, and wow. we went to the dock, and they met us. Uh -huh. Okay, and they'd one would say they had it all fixed out who was gonna they they came to take us home with them each one you know different ones. I so see. one said, "I'll take that one and that one," <laughs> and it was me and Ruby. It happened to be us two, and we were far apart. Oh no kidding! And it was Lucille O'Neill. Turned out to be Lucille O'Neill. So I'll take her and her. That far apart, but we were still to death over that. Yeah. We were going to swap anyway. Yeah. And the teacher, oh, we went to the house with Lucille O'Neill. It was the nicest place to be sure it was. Anyway, 
they had a pump, water pump in the kitchen. Now you must remember we didn't have electricity. I don't know where. So that was our experience to that house. Well, when we went to the school house, everybody was there but us. We went only in the back, you know, or in the back, the crowd that was in the play. Everybody got to telling about where they stayed. Uh -huh. So Donald Willis, uh -huh. that's my neighbor's brother. He was with us. He was in the play. Oh, I see. And he said, Said, the, the, said we, the, uh, him and Goldie and Mr. Hardesty, Goldie was his wife, me, him, her and her husband, Mr. Hardesty, mm -hmm. and Bertie Clyde Willis and Donald Willis was, went to the same house to eat. Oh. They took them to stay with them. I see. And she, he said while they were, Donald said, I didn't think they'd ever get anything to eat. Said, uh, go one time the clock struck. He said, Goldie said, Are they having church? Where are they having church tonight? Mm -hmm. She thought it was a church and it was a clock striking. Oh, that was a, the principal's wife said that. And he said, I thought to never get nothing to eat. So I looked and saw a big banana pudding. I was a dying to get to that. Mm -hmm. And they called on, said, and they called on Bertie Clyde to pray, mm -hmm. asked a blessing over the food. He said, and I thought he'd never quit. I keep look, shut one eye and look at the other. The other eye. I had my eye on that banana pudding. I said, I'll never get to that. Oh, dear. So, so I thought he was going to pray all night. But finally he quit. Was the group that went, was it the group that formed through the school or through the church? church? Uh -huh. It was through the church. Church group. But some of the folks from the uh -huh. school were involved too. Were in it. Uh -huh. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, and uh, where, where did you uh, perform at Oak Cup? Where did they have you? Did in the school, play? school at building. School? And mm. so we did. We went on the stage, and I had to talk the most, but mm. I could. I had a good mind. I could learn then. Yeah. Well. I remember anything way back there. I better do something that happened last week. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, I. After the play, oh, we were on the stage, and some little boy on the front seat started vomiting. And we went back, and we went, next time I saw Donald Gray in the back, he said in the dressing rooms, he said backstage, you know, mm -hmm. he said that little boy, they had so good to eat tonight, that little boy ain't used to it. Oh. We, that they fixed special stuff for us, you know. Oh, I see. We laughed. Mm -hmm. After the play, we all went to a place on the beach, mm -hmm. dance place. We went in. We started in there, and they, some boy came meeting us, said, here comes Charlie. Oh. And we turned around, headed out, and left. Oh, really? He'd been drinking. Yeah. Oh, really? I see. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I was going to this. I have to remember where we were. Um, let's see. Sounds like, well, it sounds like you were involved in a lot of this. Plays and things yeah, we, like yeah, we had plays all the time. Great. Which school were you at? Where, where Harker's you? Island School. I graduated here. Oh. It was the tenth, the eleventh grade was high as it went then. Really? Wow. Uh huh. And George Hardesty was our principal until the last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and that school that's been torn down. Is that right? Uh huh. I see. So it was the older school. Yeah. Um, we're getting back. I want to get back to um, the church music a little bit because you you sang with the Northern Methodist Choir. Uh, yeah. And then at some uh -huh. point, you went to the Pentecostal Church. Then, well, yeah. How did that come about? Well, um, a man came, a preacher came down there that uh, they shouted. It was holiness, you know. Yeah. Met John Wesley was the first one that preached sanctification. 
So when you're sanctified, you feel the Spirit of the Lord and shout. Well, and that preacher didn't like it, and he told, said that, that the women was nervous because her husband was gone. That's why they're in that gent and shouted. Oh, goodness. Ran them away. So they left and went to the theater. Across the road from the Methodist Church was a theater. It burned down about a year or two ago. Hmm. At the lodge hall. Hmm. Is that where it, there's a sign now that says Old Fashioned Holy Ghost Meeting? No. Oh, it's next near that, though. Uh huh. Yeah. That's, that was our sign there. Oh. We had meeting on the road every now and then in the summertime. Oh. Anyhow, they. Uh, it's about a block from there. Mm -hmm. In front of the Texaco service station. Yes. Across the road from that was where the lodge building was. I see. And the and the Methodist church was at east of that where that station is. I see. That building's no more now. Uh -uh. Right. No. The Mormon church is closer to that now. Okay. Anyhow, We got the steeple back in the singing. Yeah, we sang, me and, me and Ruby and Myrtle used to sing specials together. Oh, really? Three of us. Three of us. That's wonderful. And uh, we'd have programs all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, in the Edwards League and all like that, we'd had the best times. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any of the songs you sang? No, yeah. I don't. I live it. I do, and I don't. Mm -hmm. What part would you sing? Sometimes I lead, and sometimes I'd sing baritone. Sometimes tenor or alto, or something like that. That's it. How would y'all just get together and practice? And uh huh. Could work stuff out that way. Yeah. That's great. Uh huh. Do you read music? No. Oh, I took uh, I took one year that the music teacher was on the island. I bought me a piano oh. and took music. I, I taught that's when I was going to the Refuge Fellowship Church. Oh. And I took music and taught them to sing us, uh, Our God is Able is the name of it. Mm. Mm. That's great. But so you all... Um, you were saying that some folks left the Northern Methodist Church and yeah. went to a different building uh -huh. where the old theater was. Yeah, and then they they left there and built the Free Grace Church down the ferry road. Oh, okay. Yes. Free Grace, you've been there, the Holiness yes. Church. Right. And then uh, some of them left there and and went to the schoolhouse. They call it schoolhouse. But that church I buy that res restaurant, uh, Captain's Choice is a church alongside of that. Free Grace Wesley, that one? Oh, I can shut this off, it's all right. No, it's, yeah. I'm going there tonight. That's Lighthouse, the Lighthouse Chapel. Lighthouse Chapel, they're having a revival. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lighthouse Chapel. That came from there, and then the Grace Holiness came from there. And how did you all, I know you and Myrtle, anyway, went to the Pentecostal church? Yeah. So I went, no, wait a minute. The, a lady, Carrie Hancock, uh -huh. was from Davis's, Davis Shore. Yes. You know where that is, Davis. Yeah. Anyway, she was over here, and she started a Baptist church. She was Baptist. Started a little oh, Baptist yeah. church in the woods, they called it. You know, yeah. Upper Lane. By a store. Well. Anyway, anyway, my mother went there with her. She was a good friend to hers, and my grandma, mama, and granddaddy. Oh, they died in the Methodist church. Mm. But anyway, everybody started going up there, and I went with my mother there. Dad and all of them. Anyhow, then uh, C Cecil Styron. A man, a preacher from Lowlands. 
came down here and would come to that church, to the Baptist church, and preached Pentecostal holiness. Oh. But uh, the ch second chapter of Acts, you know, mm. and the Holy Ghost came, and so that upset everybody on the island. Wow. The churches didn't believe it or nothing, but ours did. So it was on, somewhere in California, wasn't it? Asia Street, I believe. Uh, yes, I... Where the Lord had poured out His Spirit there. He said, the Bible says, in the last days I'll pour out of my Spirit on all flesh. Anyway, He poured it out there in the... in Cecil Starring came here preaching about it. He had got it. Anyway, in the... They believed it to our church, that little church in the woods, that little Baptist church. Wow. And the people... The, the men would have to walk on either side of of the preachers. You've heard about it, haven't you? Yeah. On the, either side of the preachers to keep the brick bats from hitting the preacher. Wow. Yeah, they were bad. Wow. And bust out the windows and stuff like that. My goodness. Yeah. Wow. Anyhow, one day, one night they were in there singing in Myrtle. She, she was, Myrtle was still going. She was leaving with us. See, Myrtle married my brother. That's right. That she was real young, and he was too. But she was fourteen, I believe. Wow. And so she was still going with that crowd. Her mama went there to church, pretty great church, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and and Myrtle started that Sunday morning. The Lord told her to go up there to church. She lived with my mother, and she said she believed my mother. My mother got the Holy Ghost, and she knew it was real in mm. my daddy. So she came up there that morning. Myrtle came in the church, a walking. She walked from there right on to the church, far up the road, about a quarter of a mile, I reckon, ain't it? So. From Mommy's house to... It's about a quarter of a mile. Anyway, anyway, she came up walking. She said she passed... Uh, her mama's house and said her brother was sitting in it, Mervyn Rouge. Mm -hmm. And he he said, uh, that's right, sis, do it right. She was walking up. She said she was walking the fastest or swinging her arms. And I remember I was in the church that morning when she came up to come in. I did remember what they were singing. I had written it down. Cinder's got that. Mm. And they formed the after she came out, she came and went to the church there. So when she came in, they had a trio. They formed a trio, Myrtle and Lottie and Mary Louise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was the best singing that's ever come from anywhere, isn't it? Yeah, it was. They could sing better than anybody on the island. Okay. Mary Louise is still even in Lottie is too. Yeah. Myrtle sang, uh, Myrtle sang uh, baritone and alto, and Lottie sang tenor. Yeah, and Myrtle played the piano. She could play by eye. She by she didn't, honey. She didn't take no no notes or nothing. Her sister could too, River Pearl. And the girl I told you that went played with us in that contest, she played. Just picked it up. <coughs> what was Lottie? What was her last name? Lottie Lewis. Lottie Lewis. And Mary Louise. What was Hancock. Her? Oh. Okay. Uh -huh. They were all in, and that was the Pentecostal. It changed to Pentecostal. Yeah, church. and the Pentecostal yeah. church. They they moved that little out there to the, on the road where the Pentecostal church is now. Uh -huh. And that's where I went. I am. But anyhow, I got married in 1940. Graduated in 1935. Okay. Got married in 1940. Mm. And went to Charleston to live. My husband was stationed there. Oh, in South Carolina? Uh-huh. Wow. And so I began, I said, I forgot, all, not didn't forget them, but I left all my friends here and everything. Mm. Well, they got married and left the island. Mm -hmm. Some of them left the island and had their own families and things like that. So when I come back, my son was born to Charleston. Mm -hmm. And... How long were you away for? About five or six years. Wow. And, uh, mm. or seven, I, I don't know how long it was. Yeah. 
Anyhow, my husband said, I believe, honey, I believe I'll get out of the service. We'll go back home. No, uh -uh. I'm, I'm wrong again. He said it would be by Candy's Grill. Our good friend there, Mr. Walter, Mr. and Mrs. Walter, lived right across the street from us in mm -hmm. the housing project. As, uh, you know, it wasn't no apartments. This was a housing project. And he said, I've looked, well, we were going to buy that. They had a grill in Charleston. Yeah. Mm. Out there in the, in the Dorchester Terrace, where we lived in. Mm. And uh, so you started. And the war, the war started there too. I was there when the war started, and it was there when it ended. Wow. When it ended, there were walk people walking on cars, on the tops of the cars to get across the street. That's what you had to do that night. Mm -hmm. Then my husband went down there. To, didn't have no televisions in. Yeah. The radios was a blaring out all over Charleston. And we went along the battery. Yeah, there was just a, like, there's a lot of Navy. Is it Navy down there in Charleston? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Navy down there. Yeah. yeah. Navy and Coast Guard, too. Yeah. Yeah. So you started a grill with the... And we, we started, he said, well, let's buy the grill and stay here. Yeah. So we were going to the, the day before he was supposed to ship over or get out when... He said they went. That he went. Come home. And said, "Honey, I shipped over today. So I know what's best for us." He shipped over. He didn't have it six more years to go. Mm. So that was six more years. Mm. And Donnie got. When Donnie got, we had re enrolled him in the Citadel, uh. Charleston. Oh, nice. And I said, "I better go home." I said, "I decided I'd come home." So I, we bought this land. He came, we come on leave one time. He bought all this land. Stripped, went down to Johnny Lane Lewis's, yeah. wow. nearly, nearly to our church. Wow. And there wasn't no houses or nothing out here then. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'll go home. Donnie had to go to school. I said, we'll put him in school on that, that island. So Claude got transferred to, on the Escanaba. That was north. Was that a boat then? Yeah. 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 Went out in the North Atlantic. Wow. Now he's in the Navy? No, he's in the Coast, oh, Coast Guard. Coast Guard, okay. And anyway, he went out there off Iceland. Oh, okay. Where day, uh, six oh. months a day and six months a night. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Iceberg roll over here. Oh. He was out there, and I came home, and th that house in front of his mother and father's, we built it. I said, we had furniture in our house to Charleston, so that we rented it and furnished. Mm. So I had three bedrooms there, and I had three bedroom suits, and furniture, all the furniture, all the rooms were furnished. So I had to put that furniture in storage. Uh -huh. <laughs> so George right. Berlance and Charleston. Anyway, we come. I come home, and I got his uncle to build me a little. We owned that land across there from his mother, so I got my his uncle to build us a one one room there to put the furniture in. Wow. And I got Joe Whitley to go to Charleston and get the furniture for me. He went and picked it up, brought it back. In that, and I said I want to move in. Other words, so I got I stayed with his mother, my husband's mother, mm -hmm. across the road from there. So I got that man, to, his uncle, to be on two more rooms on it. Good. He built two more rooms on it, and I moved in it. Mm -hmm. My husband didn't even know it when he came home. <laughs> I took him over there instead of. <laughs> and, and so it's that big house built down there in it. Yeah. Wait, which one is it now? On the shore there. This road goes on the right, right here. Yeah. That's goes right. And it's, and it's a third house. Schultz house is now? 
Yeah, third Golden hash. Night. Third hash on the left. Third hash. Third hash. It's a. Uh, There's a Bobby Russell's and Carlitos in, in that and one. And then Richard Allen and Ida. Uh -huh. No, it's Carlitos. No, it's Russell's. And it's Carlitos and Beck and then that one. And then Ida. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So he came back, he didn't even know that you were staying in that uh -huh. house. When did he come back to stay? Or it, how long did you live in that house by yourself? Hand me that. The, the box under that picture out. Anyhow, I, I am. Uh, mean the little boy. Yes. Uh, Donnie went to school. He came from school one day. I remember got off the school bus right here on the. Uh, to come down there. And he had a big cat in his arms. He had a. He had a riding breeches on that day, <laughs> and and a leather jacket, real leather. Oh, okay. And he was a little boy. He, and he was so little. He pulled his that cat tore his shirt, tore that jacket up. Oh no. That day, his paws in it. Oh dear. Teacher had give it to him. Gosh, they have a box of pictures here. I just want to show you one. Uh, find out when he... That was him sitting there. That's your husband. Mm-hmm. That's when he retired from the Coast Guard. They took a picture. Uh -huh. 1958. Uh -huh. Well, that's quite some time after the Second World War, isn't it? Uh -huh. Was he ever stationed near here, or was he always far away? Always far away. He, sta he was in there. One time he got to Fort Macon a little while. Oh. That must have been nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, most of the crowd around here never, never stayed at Fort Macon that long. They were always sent home. Uh -huh. They never liked Mm. Well, yeah. Yeah. Now, when it was after that that um, this what you were telling me last time I was here about um, Myrtle's church, uh -huh. how she how she yeah changed over. The Lord told her. Hold on, this one is sticking up a little bit back. That's Myrtle. Granddaughter, oh. the one who plays the piano in church. Oh, oh man, the junior's wife's in here too. Was that Bonnie, her yeah. granddaughter? Uh -huh. Yeah. Myrtle come up there that day and they started the trio, them three singing, and right. we went to the Pentecostal, moved the church up there to the where the Pentecostal church is now. That's right. And, and they joined the conference, you know. And I was still, I was in Charleston and I got married, see, mm -hmm. 1940. Did you go to Pentecostal church in Charleston when you were down there? Mm -mm. No. But when you came back? You went again with Myrtle? Yeah, uh-huh. Really, Pentecostal? She was living with us. My, she seemed less like a sister because she, oh. she and her Betty lived with my mother and father. And my sister, my two sisters and I signed for them to get the house and store. Uh -huh. So that's why they lived with my mother yeah. and father. That was our house in Charleston. <laughs> We rented. Oh, That's the wow. backyard. That's my mother and the grandchildren. Mm -hmm. That's my son. 
There's a cat. Is that that same cat, cat you're talking cat. about? <laughs> wow. Yeah. That was Miss Flowers, my neighbor, lived across the, across the street from me. That was next door neighbor. Miss Flowers and her husband on the back porch. He owned a, uh, the houses were built like that. Mm -hmm. Housing projects. Yeah. I was looked about the best of any of my victims. Sorry. Anyhow. What do you think, why do you think she was, uh, or she just was told one day that she needed to start her own church? Yeah. No, um, she, she said that the churches on the island were, oh, there was, there was, then a Baptist church came, there was a Methodist and a Baptist, and the free grace and the grace holiness, and that schoolhouse, what is it, Lighthouse Chapel. And the Pentecostal, there's some eight churches on the island today. Mm. So that's too many for this little island. Mm -hmm. Although everybody can't get in one church, I know that. Mm -hmm. But it's too many in the Mormon church too. So there's too many churches on the island. Because yeah. that that Grace Holiness is the Lighthouse Chapel and the in the Free Grace. They all came from the Free Grace Church. They could yeah. go back. That it would hold them all. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Merle would go in the toilet, in that toilet, and had a chicken pen, big chicken pen, chicken house. Mm -hmm. She'd go in there and pray, and the Lord told her to, be, to start having services around to the houses to get the crowd together. Mm -hmm. So she did, and her sister, River Pearl, she went to the Free Grace Church, and they didn't believe in the Holy Ghost either. They don't believe in talking in tongues. You don't have to do it all the time. We don't believe that you do it all the time. We believe that when it comes, it does like the pinnacles. You will speak in tongues and that you don't have to no more. But, but you can, you will. Mm -hmm. They'd say that and the, anybody talked in the unknown tongue was uh, come right straight from the devil. But yeah. the Bible says he that speaking in the unknown tongue is talking directly to God and no man understands. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't believe it, I wouldn't say no word about it. Afraid. Anyway, that's the bold team on the island. I'm on uh, down there where I lived in. Oh, my, on the island, that's my boy right there. He broke his arm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, it's family boys. So did they went around to different people's houses. They had services. Yeah, and had service in somebody. Who, who would preach at those services? Well, they just had prayer meeting, like we women, we go, and everybody's people, we come in there and get saved, you go to one house one night, and it, well, somebody out of River Pearl's church, from the Great Free Grace Church, told River Pearl, said, you're going to tie our church up, said, told her to quit. Mm -hmm. So she quit, and mm -hmm. so directly we all quit, and the Lord told her, that day she went in the chicken house to pray, the Lord, Lord told her to build a sanctuary of the Lord. So, Owen Fulford told her about the land he owned out there. Mullins Drive, all of them, there wasn't no roads out there or nothing, it's just woods. Mm -hmm. And so my brother went out there and bought a whole lot of land out there. And Owen told her, told him to build a, a Jim Walter house. So they did. The first church was a Jim Walter house with no petition in it or nothing, just a straight open house. Wow. And how was she able to build a, a church? How was she able to uh, afford it or did others help her? Well, uh, I did and her husband and Johnny William Willis, Johnny William Gaskell. He, he went with us, went out there with us, mm. and three or four from the church, Jenny, Jones, Fanny Nelson, went, there were just a few. Mm. Oh, Perry Guthrie was the first preacher, but not right then, he mm. didn't come right, my brother asked him to go. And me and his mother, Letty Guthrie, Perry Guthrie's mother, mm -hmm. 
we had a, Claude was home then, had a store. We, we, we had bought a filling station over there. And, and he said, we rented a while, and he said, honey, now I know what's best for us. He said, I'm going to Cherry Point. You can sell the store if you want to or rent it. So Perry was helping me over there. And we'd go to Maggie's then. Oh, we started praying in the Pentecostal church before, before they started that church out there. Mm -hmm. And the, the Pentecostal crowd didn't like it. They'd, one woman said she, she was going to, she said, I'd like to have a rattlesnake. I'd throw in there on them while they're to the altar praying. One of the members of the church, Sarah Thomas, you know. Huh? And she's 